All right, y'all, so we are back and we're gonna dive in some more information and try to uncover and reveal the truths and secrets hidden within the Vatican. All right, this video here is titled, This Vatican Insider Revealed They Are Hiding This Deep Within the Vatican's Closed Archives. All right, so we're gonna get into it. If you knew, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and join the family and hit that like button for more content. Let's check it out. The possibility of discovering signs of advanced life and beings is not typically associated with major religious institutions, including the Vatican. Some speculate whether any findings may exist within the Vatican's secret archives, which span several centuries and could possibly include such information. According to the director of the Vatican Observatory, Dr. Jose Funes, new evidence suggests that the Vatican may possess evidence of the existence of advanced life and could be concealing their existence from the public. Why? In a recent interview, Dr. Funes stated that due to the immense size of the universe, it is highly probable that life forms similar to those on Earth have evolved elsewhere. The same thing we've been saying and continuously saying for a while on this channel. This marks the first time Vatican representatives have publicly acknowledged the possibility of extraterrestrial life. This marks a noteworthy change in Vatican policy, as until now, the stance upheld by the institution was that the existence of advanced life was not plausible. This recent shift suggests that either an event of great significance has taken place, or a discovery has been made that has required this statement to be issued. Hence Both. the reversal of a teaching that has been upheld for more than two millennia. Previous reports suggest that the Vatican possesses concrete proof of the existence of intelligent life beyond our planet. This is because the Vatican houses a private, yet well-funded scientific academy known as the Pontifical Academy of Sciences, which is specifically dedicated to the study of astronomy and celestial bodies. Additionally, it was verified that in 1998, the Vatican Library uncovered skulls possessing elongated heads and small faces that couldn't be attributed to any known species on Earth. Despite repeated denials, this assertion has been met with plenty of skepticism particularly with respect to access to the supposed discovery site. However, if accurate, it implies that the Vatican has knowledge of advanced life and is concealing it. The Vatican Archives, located within the Vatican City, house an extensive collection of historical documents and records that span centuries. This repository of knowledge holds a significant place in the annals of human history, and its contents have been a subject of great curiosity and speculation. While portions of the archives have been made accessible to researchers and scholars, there are certain sections that remain restricted from public access, leading to questions about what might be hidden within its walls. The Vatican Archives, officially known as the Vatican Apostolic Archives, contain a vast collection of papal correspondence, historical manuscripts, papal bulls, decrees, letters, and other documents dating back to the 8th century. The archives are a treasure trove of information offering insights into the Catholic Church's history, the lives of popes and religious figures, diplomatic affairs, and various aspects of human civilization. Despite the invaluable historical significance of the Vatican archives, access to its contents has been limited. The restrictions are primarily due to the preservation and protection of delicate documents, as well as the need to respect privacy, confidentiality, and the religious sensitivities associated with certain materials. Scholars and researchers are allowed access to the archives, but they must meet specific criteria and obtain- I was about to say, we heard in one video, like the, <laughs> the process to get in there and you still might not be guaranteed access. That's crazy. Permission from the Vatican authorities. The process requires a legitimate research purpose and can involve navigating through bureaucratic channels. Yep. The Vatican employs a team of archivists and experts to assist researchers in their inquiries and facilitate their access to the materials. However, even with authorized access, some documents may remain off limits due to their delicate condition or the sensitive nature of their content. Ain't that something? You go through everything down to probably giving away your firstborn or something like that or, or blood sample or everything else and you still don't gain full access. Now, hmm, 
That, that doesn't sound like a place that's being too secretive now, does it? Hence the sarcasm. The restricted sections of the Vatican archives have given rise to speculation and theories about what might be hidden within. Yep. Some theories suggest that the archives hold controversial documents related to the Church's involvement in historical events, including matters of religious doctrine, papal decisions, and even potential historical cover-ups. These speculations have fueled popular culture and fictional narratives, but without concrete evidence, they remain speculative in nature. True. It is essential to note that the Vatican has taken steps toward transparency and accessibility in recent years. In 2019, Pope Francis announced the unsealing of the archives, a decision aimed at shedding light on the Church's actions during World War II. The gradual opening of these archives reflects a commitment to historical research and accountability. While certain sections of the Vatican archives remain inaccessible to the general public, it is crucial to understand that this is not uncommon in the realm of historical archives. True. Many institutions, including national archives and private collections, have restricted access to sensitive or fragile materials to ensure their preservation and integrity. Archivists and custodians of historical documents bear the responsibility of balancing public access with the need for safeguarding irreplaceable artifacts. As of right now, the Vatican archives hold a wealth of historical and cultural treasures, providing valuable insights into the Catholic Church's history and broader aspects of human civilization. While access to the archives is restricted, efforts have been made to grant authorized researchers access to their contents. The limitations stem from the need to protect fragile documents and respect privacy, confidentiality, and religious sensitivities. While the restricted sections have sparked speculation and theories, concrete evidence regarding the hidden contents remains elusive. The ongoing efforts toward transparency and greater accessibility demonstrate the Vatican's commitment to scholarly research and historical inquiry. NASA's Hubble sees asteroids spouting six comet-like tails. It's truly thrilling when we understand more and more of the world that is out there. And that excitement Straight is only enhanced yeah. as astronomers make these discoveries using their own equipment. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope uncovered a celestial body we had never seen anything like before. Upon its discovery in 2013, it was affectionately dubbed Weird and Freakish. <laughs> this unknown body was discovered within an asteroid belt, but this does not seem like any ordinary asteroid. Usually, an asteroid will look like a tiny speck of light, but this discovery, P-2013, seems to have six tails of dust coming off it, likened by NASA to spokes coming off a wheel. These tails each look like something you would see trailing behind a comet, though to see six on what seems to be an asteroid is highly unusual. Lead investigator David Jewett of the University of California explained that what was even more amazing, shocking and impressive was that over a 13-day period, the structures of these tails had undergone massive changes. He said, it's hard to believe we're looking at an asteroid. One explanation for the unusual looking asteroid is that the rate it was rotating at increased so much that the surface effectively began to fly apart, releasing excessive amounts of dust in the process. This could have been possible due to the weak gravity of the asteroid not being able to hold it altogether. After the initial discovery, Hubble went back just 13 days later, and the asteroid looked entirely different. Jewett commented, We were completely knocked out. The next step for the team is to see if they can calculate the accurate rate of rotation for the asteroid to compare this speed to their expectations. Scientists say around seven interstellar objects pass through the inner solar system every year. Most people are familiar with the way the solar system works. Planets orbit around the Sun, drawn to its gravitational pull, and most of these planets have their own associated moons, likewise held in orbit around the planets. There are also objects flying through space that are not gravitationally bound to a star. These bodies, which include asteroids, comets, and rogue planets, 
are known as interstellar objects, and scientists have recently released data about just how many of these untethered flying objects might be zipping through the atmosphere at any given time. I bet we'll be surprised. The first interstellar know. object in the solar system was detected surprisingly recently, on October 19th of 2017. And since then, scientists have been closely monitoring for signs of other objects entering our solar system. The results of these studies appear to verify theoretical work which suggested that these interstellar objects are not altogether uncommon within the solar system. That's what I was thinking. I was like, it's probably more things than, that we know about or have ever even thought about that pass through our solar system that they don't tell us about. You know, I would like to know that information. It's just extra on top of the other things that I'd be searching for when I'm looking at things going on in space. But yeah, that's interesting facts to know, man. Like what happens when that stuff, uh, is it drawn to us or, or is it just, is it coming from somewhere? That provides a lot of information that I think they just think we don't too much care about, but I actually do. In fact, a recent study conducted by researchers with the Initiative for Interstellar Studies determined that as many as seven and possibly even more interstellar objects enter the Milky Way each year. Additionally, because these objects are formed outside the solar system and manage to make their way into our realm, it implies that there is an incredibly large population of these bodies being created throughout the universe. Now, what would happen if that starts to increase and double and triple and quadruple over throughout the years? Now, we have a problem, you know what I mean? What does that mean for us or our planet or possibility of more things colliding with us? So why does it matter how many of these rogue objects find themselves flying through our solar system every year? Maybe I'm about to get the answer the to my question. The study revealed that, although these objects are only temporary nomads through the solar system, they tend to follow predictable orbits as they pass through. Knowing approximately how many interstellar objects we can expect in our vicinity every year, as well as having thorough data regarding the approximate paths that these objects tend to follow while passing through, opens up the possibility of potentially landing spacecraft on these objects one day. Although we have been able to study interstellar objects from afar, they are still largely a mysterious subject to researchers, and being able to study them up close and personal provides an unbelievable potential for knowledge for scientists seeking to study the beginnings of our universe and solar system. Additionally, because interstellar objects are formed in outside solar systems, being able to physically contact and study them would provide unbelievable opportunities for discovery regarding the conditions of other systems. This discovery, which has officially confirmed what we have long suspected, has revolutionized the field of astronomy. Marshall Eubanks, the lead author of the study and a physicist with the Initiative for Interstellar Studies, underlined the importance of this discovery in an email to Universe Today saying that this discovery is significant in a way that cannot be understated. Just by proving that they exist, it has had a profound impact, creating a field of study almost from nothing, a field that funding authorities are just beginning to recognize. Interstellar objects provide us with the opportunity to study and in the future literally touch exobodies decades before the earliest possible missions to even the nearest stars, such as Proxima Centauri. Already dozens of grants have been proposed that would fund spacecraft missions to contact these interstellar objects, meaning that we might have answers sooner rather than later. Okay. Scientists detect tones in the ringing of a newborn black hole for the first time. We got a new one? Scientists have found evidence of tones in the ringing of a newborn black hole tones. that supports Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, a black hole that is created from the cosmically quaking collisions of two giant black holes should ring after the collision. Huh? This ringing should produce gravitational waves just as how a bell produces sound waves after ringing. Einstein expected that a particular pitch and decay of the gravitational waves should point to a new black hole's spin and mass. Now MIT physicists have studied the ringing of a newly formed black hole and have found evidence that Einstein's prediction was correct all along. That dude right, that dude right there was smart, brilliant, all of the above, man. Thing to the findings Gosh. that were published. How does he even just come up with stuff like that? 
in the physical review letters, all characteristics of black holes other than mass, spin and electric charge should be swallowed up by the black hole itself and therefore be rendered unobservable. These extra characteristics are referred to as hair and the findings support another part of Einstein's theory that black holes are hairless. The researchers studied the ringing of the black hole and used Einstein's calculations to determine the spin and mass that the black hole should have. Their calculations matched the measurements of the black hole they observed. Any significant deviation from the measurements would have pointed to the black hole having other characteristics besides mass, spin and electric charge. However, due to the closeness in the measurements, the observations made by the research team support Einstein's theory that black holes are essentially ball giants, lacking in hair-like properties that are something other than mass, spin and electric charge. While these findings support Einstein's theory of general relativity, that does not mean scientists are not open to other possibilities. As the study's lead author, Maximiliano Isi, points out, this is the first experimental measurement that succeeds in directly testing the no-hair theorem. It doesn't mean black holes couldn't have hair. It means the picture of black holes with no hair lives for one more day. The goal of science is discovery, and the discovery made by this research team has shown once again the genius of Albert Einstein's work as he predicted something decades before there was real evidence, which is quite extraordinary. Yeah, because I didn't think sound would even come close you know it says nothing escapes a black hole light especially so i automatically assume that meant sound as well so how can I, I still don't understand it or grasp it you know what i mean but it's interesting to to know if two collide that you do get a vibrational sound I, i'm still lost on how though astronomers identify and snap a photo of a baby exoplanet. Exoplanets are all around us and the constant hunt for more has led researchers in the discovery of thousands throughout the years. Recently, however, they were able to add one more very special one to this list. This newest member of the exoplanet family, dubbed 2M0437b, is rather close at only approximately 400 light years from Earth and instantly caught scientists' eyes due to its young age, as it appears to be only a few million years old, which is a blink of the eye in the context of space, making this one of the youngest planets observed to date. Because it is so young, the newly discovered exoplanet is also incredibly hot, measuring over 1200 degrees Celsius and still spewing lava-like temperatures as a result of its recent birth. Researchers were amazed by incredibly detailed images of the object, an immense rarity when it comes to exoplanet observation. Observed in the Taurus cloud by a team with the University of Hawaii working with the Subaru telescope and the Keck Observatory, this planet is one of the only ones of such a young age that has been able to be directly observed. Images of young planets such as this are always incredibly interesting to scientists because of what they can teach us about the planet creation process something about which very little is currently understood. This new planet is doubly interesting because not only is it a baby planet, but the images that captured it were incredibly detailed and provide a wealth of information for astronomers to pore over as they attempt to uncover the secrets of one of Earth's neighbours. Typically, because exoplanets appear very small and dark when compared to stars, they can only be seen if they happen to be caught passing in front of its host star. So you gotta when catch this it. happens, you gotta catch it at the perfect time. Timing is everything with these. But at the same time, like I'm starting to believe that we may be wrong about the timeline of our planet's creation. You know what I mean? That's been a thought in the back of my mind for a little while now. Maybe we're looking at things wrong. And him saying that us studying these planets at such an early age can tell us a lot about like our own just brought made that thought resurface again. Maybe we're looking at things the wrong way. Maybe our planet is a lot older than we think of instead of it being, you know what I mean, a lot younger. Maybe we're far along in our planet stage than we think. I don't know. This is something I've been thinking about lately. 
Researchers can only detect it by measuring the change in radiant light that is given off by the host star and usually are unable to capture any clear details about the planet itself. While 2M043b is much more visible compared to a typical exoplanet because of its extremely hot temperature and the fact that it orbits a very far distance from its host star, almost twice the distance of Pluto from our Sun. This combination meant that it emitted a detectable glow that was sufficient for telescopes to get a rather good look at the planet as it spun through space. Researchers studying the young fledgling of a planet also hope that the imminent completion of the powerful James Webb telescope could unlock several more mysteries surrounding this planet's formation. Capturing such clear and telling images to provide for direct observation of an exoplanet is an incredibly rare feat, almost as rare as discovering such a young exoplanet, and these two features make this an amazing find indeed. Having such a clear view of an immature planet will provide great opportunities for researchers to better understand how these exoplanets and even our own Earth are formed and moulded over time. Only time will tell what other amazing discoveries will result from the study of this baby exoplanet. Neutron star undergoes wild behaviour changes The Chandra X-ray Observatory has been a precious source of technology these last few years. On top of discovering the neutron star merger, Chandra has also captured two images that show large changes in the X-ray brightness of a neutron star that is rapidly rotating. The neutron star in question is a dense remnant of a supernova that remains in the orbit of a low-mass star. The binary star system is a part of the globular cluster M28 and is known as IGR J182452452. This star provides insight into the evolution of neutron stars in binary systems. The neutron star makes a rotation 254 times a second and radio wave pulses have also been observed from this. The current widely accepted model of these objects evolution is that matter from the companion star is pulled to the surface of the neutron star in an accretion phase by a disk. The rotation rate increases as spinning material from the disk falls onto the neutron star. Over time, the transfer of matter slows and the neutron star's magnetic field sweeps away the remaining material and a millisecond radio pulsar is formed. This evolution of a millisecond pulsar from a low-mass X-ray binary should take place over several billion years. Throughout the course of this evolution, however, the system might quickly switch between the two states. The observations of IGR J182452452 may have provided the first direct evidence for these behavioural changes. Observations from 2002 all the way to 2013 show that there were times when radio pulses disappeared and it behaved like an X-ray binary, and at other times the radio pulses turned back on and it no longer acted like an X-ray binary. Recent observations have also shown that the switch can occur in a shorter than expected time frame, possibly even a few days, which is a powerful indication that there is an evolutionary link between radio millisecond pulsars and X-ray binaries. These observations were from multiple sources besides the Chandra, such as ESA's XMM Newton, NASA's Swift XR, Vesterbork Synthesis Radio Telescope, and more demonstrating that gathering the data needed to get closer to the truth is no easy task. Earth's core is leaking a surprising amount of ancient helium-3. Some discoveries require special tools to observe objects light years away. We don't sound good. <laughs> Earth's leaking. Uh, uh, just starting a sentence like that just don't sound great. Sometimes uncover mysteries on our own planet. For example, according to researchers, Earth's core is leaking ancient helium, and they are still trying to figure out why. Helium has long been thought of as a potential nuclear energy source, but scientists are surprised to discover that Earth itself is made up of it. Another surprise is that there may be indications that Earth is older than previously thought due to this discovery. For Earth to have accreted this helium-3, I'm going to play the lottery today. <laughs> I'm going to play the lottery today. Was not I just not saying that's been a thought in the back of my mind. 
that we could have been wrong. My reasoning was totally different from theirs, but we we arrived at the same spot. That's all I can say. And for them to say that, man, that's really going to make me spiral into something now because now I'm going to really lean into that and start really paying attention and looking at things differently now. Oh, wow. Hey. It wow. would have required our planet to form inside of the early solar nebula of the wow. Sun. While the age of the Earth has long been debated by planetary formation theorists, this finding shifts the current understanding of how close in age the Earth is to our Sun. In a paper published in the American Geophysical Union, researchers suggest that Helium-3 was mostly formed during the Big Bang and then entered into the Earth's core during the planet's formation. According to the lead author of the paper, Peter Olson, since the solar nebula only lasted a few million years, this incorporation of helium-3 into Earth signifies that our planet started to form very early in the solar system's life. A fascinating aspect of this story is how the Earth's core was able to retain helium-3. The researchers say it is because the Earth's core is not as vulnerable to large impacts compared to the rest of the Earth's system and has been a liquid for much of Earth's history. The research team also suggests that about 2,000 grams of helium-3 leak out of Earth every year. And while geoscientists have long thought of the Earth's core as a closed system without mass exchange with the rest of Earth, they may now have to rethink that position. This is because helium-3 is now thought to have dissolved into the basalt from which Iceland and Hawaii were formed. One of the biggest questions to come out of this discovery is why helium-3 is leaking out of the Earth's core now. Uh, yeah, good it question. It is now up to the tireless work of scientists to uncover what is different about today compared to the other 5 billion years of Earth's history. It can't be good. The world of science is constantly expanding and changing, with new discoveries being made all the time. While it can be daunting to keep up with everything happening, it's also exhilarating to know that we are constantly learning more about our universe and what inhabits it. Agreed. The pace of scientific discovery is accelerating and it's an amazing time to be alive. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be that this is interesting but yet scary at the same time. To hear somebody, hear our planet's leaking helium, you know what I mean? <laughs> Ain't like we could just go down there and throw some flex seal on it. You know, we got to really pay attention to what's going on with our planet. And if we've been thinking the whole time it's uh, young in the early stages, when actually it, quite possibly that might not be the case, then that this ain't good to hear that. You don't want to hear that. This could be scary, catastrophic, and everything else. Switching planets don't seem like a bad thing, do it? <laughs> it don't. Listen, man, y'all get at me in the comment section and let me know what you thought of this video. Very, very interesting information, nonetheless. It's your boy L. Stick around and stay tuned, man. Until next one, I'm gone. Peace.